Hello everyone, and welcome back. So this time we're going to be talking about friction, which is extremely important because it's there. It's real. Gotta get used to it. Let me get my little laser pointer up. There we go. So friction. Let's learn about it. So first off, why do you care? Um, this one's a bit more obvious than most. But if you think about your brakes on your car, if you think about the fact that you can walk along the ground, all those things are possible due to friction. Surprisingly enough, Planes can fly only due to friction. <laughs> or at least that's the reason the wings have lift. Um, that's a tale for another time. If you like aerospace engineering, email me about it. I'll tell you. So if you have a set of brakes, you need to understand, well, how much force are they exerting to slow me down? And as you can see, with most brakes, they squeeze the tire from the sides. Obviously, your tire is moving straight through those brakes. So you're like, well, if I'm squeezing, where does the force come to stop it? That's friction. So you need to figure out how much the squeezing force turns into frictional force to slow down that tire and keep you from going into the ditch. Spoiler alert, it is no fun to go into a ditch with your bicycle. I had an old, old, really nice old bicycle. Brakes were terrible. Went down a huge hill, no fun. Okay, other questions for you. This guy right here, he's pulling a fridge. Does that look like a good idea? Do you feel comfortable with where he has that rope? Because honestly, I'm kind of worried that thing's going to tip over and crush his ankle. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll slide. But that's another thing that comes into account when we think about friction. We have to figure out how much friction there is to determine if this is going to tip or if it's going to stay on the floor and slide. If you're really curious about this, just take something that's got a fairly smooth bottom that's kind of tall, and just put your finger on it and press it at various points. The higher you go, eventually you're going to hit a tipping point. Maybe it's not on the object itself. But the lower you go, the more likely it's going to slide. That's all because of friction. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about dry friction here. You're like, well, what about wet friction? Wet friction gets a bit more difficult, um, but in most cases we can just consider it to be dry friction. Now, friction is the force of resistance to whatever movement this body would have. Okay, friction resists movement. Now, where does this frictional force come from? Well, you are pressing down on a surface. Um, it might be just the weight of the object. And when that object is pressing down, it is pushing into these little crevices and microscopic um, mountains and valleys on the surface that it's applied to. And so being pushed into that means that to get out of the little crevices, it needs a little bit of force. So when you apply force, it's those little crevices that are resisting you that are causing the frictional force. In actuality, though, we can make it a bit simpler in ourselves by just saying, okay, there is frictional force, um, and it's always a fraction of the force pressing down on the object. Now, as a note, if you have a surface that is at an angle, down is towards the surface, not as in literally down. Okay, other things to think about is where is that frictional force applied? That's a bit harder to figure out. You would say like, okay, well, it's all along the surface. We have those distributed loadings. We can figure out from the street loading where this should be applied as one particular point. Um, and what we can figure out is that if it's not moving, if it's sliding or if it's not most, uh, if it's completely stationary, um, then this must be an equilibrium right here. The amount of force applied, the moments applied by all this, should be an equilibrium. So we could solve to figure out where that force is technically being applied. Okay, now let's look at this a bit more. Another thing that usually gets people confused about friction is they're like, okay, well, you might, we'll see an equation a little bit later. Let's see, it's not even here yet. Um, but there is a nice little equation about static friction, which looks something like the following. I'll go ahead and show it to you. Wrong button. Right here. Is that force equals mu times n. Where n is the normal force, mu is your coefficient of friction, and then f is the frictional force. And most people, when they're calculating frictional force, just say, okay, I know what the normal force is, I know what my coefficient of friction is, boom, good. But that messes you up, because if I'm not pushing on a box, there is no frictional force. 
If I'm not trying to move something, there is no frictional force. It is just happy. It's sitting there. Frictional force is resistive force. So what we see as we look at this is that as we increase more and more pressure trying to push that box, that frictional force will increase up to a point. Eventually, it gives up the ghost. It can't take any more. And you'll suddenly have a drop in frictional force, and it will begin to move. Or the object is will move. We have two different coefficients of friction. One is for static, which reaches its maximum. This is the point where we can use this mu equation. And then it will drop down. We'll have a fairly level amount of friction for a while until that will eventually drop off as you go faster and faster. There's more and more force because it's um, it gets kind of the whole like going over speed bump effect. I'm not sure if you've ever seen this, but there's these places in Australia where they have these very like, large amount of divots, one after the other. Um, it's just how the wind and water washes out the roads. Interestingly enough, if you go over those slowly, you feel like a massive amount of bumping. If you go over them very quickly, you'll just glide along the top. And so that's what you're seeing here as we increase the force. We're eventually just going to bounce along the tops of the crevices instead of slowly but surely falling in as we go along. So that's where that drop off comes from. Okay, continuing on a little bit more. So finally we get to the equation right here, which is only good if we're at the maximum force possible. So this is a point which we usually call impending. Motion is impending when I'm applying just enough force to not quite move it, but almost move it. Like if I did any more, it would begin to move. Or maybe if I applied any less, it would begin to move like in the opposite direction. So in both of those cases, both of those cases, sorry, the frictional force is a maximum, and I can use this equation right here. Where once again, this is a mu. It looks kind of like a U that's got a runny nose um, with an S to say it's static. And this is always higher than the kinetic friction coefficient. Also, this depends on the two materials in context. So you can't say, well, I've got rubber shoes. If you're on magical no friction material, even if your rubber shoes have great you know, traction on most things, you will just continue to slide. It's why if you step on ice, sort of, um, you will begin to slip, even if you've got shoes that have good traction. Okay, and like I said before, once the block begins to move, you will go down to kinetic friction, which is usually less than static friction. And it will be roughly constant for a while, at least in the places where we care about it will be constant. Oh, sorry. And here's the big thing I said earlier. Frictional force may be less than the maximum frictional force. If I'm applying, this is a pressure here, right? It's a force I'm applying, and it is less than the maximum frictional force, then my frictional force will simply be equal to it. It is resisting me perfectly because it's not moving. And it will continue to do that until I apply more than the maximum frictional force. Okay. A little bit long here. I'll stop here for now, and next time we'll go into talking about something about like tipping or sliding. When do you have one? When do you have the other? Because that's all based on friction. So I hope this helped you, and I'll see all of you next time. Bye bye.